Hey y'all, how's it going? It's me, Pink Cloud Nine, and I have a really special guest today. Daniel uh, is going to tell us the story of the night that an intruder came into his home. How startling is that? I mean, I'd be like, uh, where's my bat? You know, or something. I don't know what I would do, to be honest. So, <laughs> Daniel, please tell us uh, the story, you know, what happened, how it yeah. happened long ago it happened you know stuff like that it was uh it's almost 10 years ago now um it was on mother's day um in the middle of the night and at the time my my husband and i we have three children and i had a baby girl and she was she was a week old at that point and my son who was 11 at the time an intruder came into his window and was just talking nonsense and so my son came to get me and he goes, dad, dad, there's somebody here. And I thought, oh, someone's at the door. Okay, well, that's odd. It's the middle of the night. Um, my son's really bad at not explaining things. <laughs> How old was he at the time? He was 11. He said, like, somebody's here. I don't know what to do. And I was like, okay. So I came downstairs in my bathrobe and there's this man standing in my living room. And he has this wide eyed, like weird look on his face. And very calmly, he says, have you seen blue? I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry, who who the hell are you? Mm -hmm. Have you seen blue? I can't find him anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and the fact that I'm a psychotherapist is a totally random fact of this story, okay? Mm -hmm. He had no idea he was breaking into the home of a therapist. He had no idea. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking at his, looking at him and he was barefoot mm -hmm. um, and he was sort of disheveled and he had a, a flannel shirt on and he looked really confused. Yeah. And I, I was just paralyzed because I thought, does he have a gun like in his in his waist strap? Does he have a buddy around the corner who's waiting for like just the right time? I didn't know what I was dealing with. Yes. And I mean, as a as a therapist, I thought, okay, I gotta figure out what the deal is here. So I'm like trying to talk to this guy and I said, you have to leave, you have to leave now. Yes. And I, the one thing I regret is I was so scared, mm -hmm. I couldn't move. I literally could not move. And he was standing right, he was standing between me and my daughter's nursery. Yeah. And I kept thinking to myself, I have to get to my baby. I have yeah. to get to my baby. And, and I was, I felt so horrible because I literally could not move. And then mm -hmm. I thought, as of right now, he doesn't know my baby's there. He has no idea she's in there. The door looks like a closet. If I just don't react, he'll leave her alone. And he was probably there having a dialogue with me and, and, completely a dialogue that wasn't even based in reason or, or logic, probably for about 10 minutes, but it felt like an hour. Wow. So my husband was on the phone with 911 trying to get the, the police out. Um, but I didn't know what I was dealing with. And yeah. it was just, my kids were screaming and crying upstairs and he, this man was just confused. So right. the, the, the police finally got there after what seemed like an eternity, um, right as the guy had just very quietly left out the front door. He just mm. walked, he just walked out, and mm. to me that was more terrifying for some reason because I thought, why is he so calm? Where did he go now? Now what's he going to do? Is he going to get his buddies? Is he going? You know, I didn't know. Mm. Wow. Um, and long story short, they arrested him and he he was put in prison. Um, wow. But he, even at the moment, I could tell this man was not well. He wasn't asking for money. He wasn't wielding any weapons. He was either really high or right. completely psychotic. I didn't know which. I didn't care which. Okay, so he did get arrested. Yes, he did. He did. Well, do you know like anything about that? Did he? Did, do you know how much time he did? Do you know if he ever? Came yeah, he got five years, and I got a letter from the court um, asking if I wanted to testify, and I declined. Right. Um, and then I got a letter like a year later saying that he was eligible for early release. And if I wanted to uh, dispute that, <clears throat> um, I actually did not. And this is why, <clears throat> um, you know, I, I, I'm a specialist in trauma. Again, totally ironic that, that this happened to me. There's no connection whatsoever. Right. Um, but I thought, you know, this man is profoundly mentally ill, clearly. Um, he wasn't in his right mind at all. I had no idea what he was doing. Right. Um, if I make him stay in prison longer, probably without medication, without treatment, whatever, what is that going to do? What is that going to help? You know? Sure, sure. Um, I get it. Plus, I mean, like, whether he remembers or not, he knows where you live. 
Exactly. Exactly. I live in a small town. People know me. <clears throat> and I believe me, that crossed my mind, too. Um, uh, people often ask me, do you wish you had a gun? And I, I, I'm glad I didn't have a gun because I was so scared I may have shot him. Right. And, then, and then what I have, like a manslaughter case in my hands with my exactly. therapy license. And my, I mean, it, it creates all different kinds of trauma. Yeah. Um, maybe it would have escalated the situation. I don't know. But so he got five years for breaking and entering or what? What yep. was the charge? He got five years for breaking and entering and menacing because he stayed there like just taunt. He wasn't taunting us, but in my mind, it, it felt like it because I didn't know who this man was. Right. Um, but, you know, after the police left, I laid in bed and I sobbed, just uncontrollably sobbed. Mm -hmm. And I was so I was more scared after the fact than I was during it. You know, when, when it when it happened, I just felt like I was a statue and I felt like I was the worst father in the world because I didn't do anything to protect my children. Um, but I realize now that I, I did exactly what I should have done, which is just downplay it and not um, draw attention to my daughter's room. Now, I'm going to ask you this. How did he get through the window, though? Like, how did that happen? It was not locked. We live out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and ironically, what I've found that there is more crime that happens out in the country um, that's not reported yeah. than, than there is in the inner cities, in my personal experience. Yeah. I'm sure there are stats that may differ from that, but that's been my personal experience. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I was shocked to learn that. Yeah, because a lot of people, uh, it, it, for some people, it might be embarrassing. Oh my gosh, somebody broke into my house, right. because I left it unlocked because it's safe here. Right. They don't report it or they don't want the uh, police at their homes. You know, right. it's a, a bunch of reasons why people don't report, you know, certain things. Um, so, I, you, so, you know, his name. Did you did you his first and last name? Did you ever research his name, his family? I don't know. I, I probably would. have. I mean, like, who is this guy? Why did he I, come? Like, is, I, yeah, I, <laughs> I mental health issues. Mm -hmm. Like, what? I um I did do a little Facebook stalking. I'm not gonna lie, okay. um, and I didn't find anything terribly alarming. Just typical Appalachian, you know, blue collar family, okay. um, with probably some mental health issues and probably yeah. some substance abuse, from what I can tell from some of the posts. Um, so there, nothing surprising there. But I but I did have to consider that I live in a small town. He knows where I live. People know me. People know him that know me. I thought how. How would I want to be treated if, God forbid, I had a psychotic break and did something really stupid? Um, and that's kind of what I thought about. Now, had he been violent, would I have a different take? Probably. Probably. Um, but the fact that his mental illness was clearly the precipitating factor for him being in my home made me look at it a little bit differently. Um, but it was no less terrifying because I didn't know what he was capable of, you know? Yeah. Uh, what what uh, around about his age? Was he like in his early 20s, late 40s? I don't know. I would say mid 30s. Okay. Mid 30s. Yeah. Um, and he he was he was speaking as though he was speaking to someone else who wasn't there. And today I believe that to be just psychosis. But I didn't know if there was actually someone there or not. Like no. schizoeffective. Maybe, maybe it's uh, paranoid schizophrenia, um, maybe schizoaffective, but clearly he was or high, some... high, like hallucinating. Who knows, right? Yeah, yeah. And again, I didn't know, didn't care, but I did notice number one, he was barefoot, and that was odd because that tells me that it wasn't a planned um break in, he was just out walking around, is my guess, in the middle of the night. Did he get drug tested or urine, urine, urine or blood analysis or anything like that? I mean, this was 10 years ago, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I'm if, sure. Like, did he yeah. know if he was like a blower or something? I don't know. Um, I'm sure they did once they booked him. That's sort of standard procedure around here. Um, yes. And I'm sure the toxicology came back in the paper I received, but it's been so long that I didn't even, I didn't think about it. But sure. if, if I had to guess, it was probably some combination of meth and uh, uh, psych psychosis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. So let's talk about a little bit. Thank you for sharing your story so yeah, much. Sure. Sure. Let's talk a little bit about how you have coped with that, like shock and incident and how, well, have, how has your 11 year old coped? You know what I mean? Was he scared as heck? Oh, he was terrified. He was absolutely terrified to this day. He locks his windows and um, we live in a different home now, 
but we live in a, a, a two-story home and he's upstairs, but he still locks his windows of course. Um, just because he can't stand the idea of it not being locked. Uh, my son had an anxiety disorder before this happened, okay. which has now been ex exacerbated that he's now on medication for it. Right. Um, in terms of how it's affected me, I, I was never a person to lock my doors. And whether that's being naive or, or too trusting, it's just, I, I was never one of those people, but I lock my doors now. Every door is locked, every window is locked. Um, I look over my shoulder a lot more than I used to. Um, I think in the beginning it was, I looked over my shoulder out of fear, but now it just feels like good practice, you know? It just feels like some common sense stuff that sort of seeped into my head that I had the luxury of not having to worry about before. Right. Well, I've always been a window and door lock and all that a lot. Mm -hmm. and when, yeah. and now that, that now that we have access to cameras in the home and right. alarms and all this stuff. But mm -hmm. I, um, when I'm out, out and about, I also carry mace and a taser. Yep. You know what's weird? I have three dogs and they did not make a sound. And they're not they're not mean dogs, but they're usually dogs that would that would bark if a stranger comes in the driveway. And I still find it odd they did not make a peep. And I remember in the moment thinking, because I, I was in the middle of the night, I was asleep. So I was trying to wake up and figure out what the heck was going on in my home. And I thought, if the dogs didn't make any noise, this must be someone who's supposed to be here. I, I wasn't thinking logically. Um, but I still think it's so weird my dogs did not make a sound. Mm. I have no idea why. <laughs> mm. That is kind of peculiar. Yeah. Okay, uh, last question. Uh, yeah. What would you do different? You know, I don't think I would do anything differently. I don't. I'm, I'm very grateful that I, although I was frozen, um, and I, I beat myself over, beat myself up about that for a long time, mm -hmm. I really did the right thing. And I, I feel in my heart I wouldn't have done anything differently. Um, I didn't escalate the situation. I made sure I maintained eye contact to try to keep his attention. Um, and I'm proud of what I did. Cool. That's perfect. Yeah. So let's speak a little bit about um, Wild Ohio Therapy Farm. Yeah. Hey, tell you. us about what uh, what that's all about. Sounds amazing. Yeah. So like I said, the fact that I just happened to be the, the local town therapist was completely mm -hmm. random as far as I know, <laughs> breaking into my home. But um, I have a six acre farm where I conduct psychotherapy for people of all ages, specifying in trauma, again, ironically, and um, which has helped me tremendously, by the way. Yeah. Um, and I have um, some farm animals, some exotic animals, and people can spend time in their therapy session outdoors with nature and animals, learning how to address mental health symptoms to deescalate um, trauma symptoms. And we have animals like alpaca um we have tame foxes we have goats uh we have raccoons um and all these animals were either rescued as orphans or um or or, or raised in captivity and people can spend time with the animals during a session instead of in you know in, inside under a cold clinical setting with fluorescent lights and it, it's especially helpful for adolescents and and young people so do people get to like uh, pet the raccoons? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. I've always wanted to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, because it's they're, so cute. Oh, they're so cute. I mean, they're animals, you know, and they're just I so tell cute. people. But obviously they run from us. Yeah, of course. Of course. Out here, you know. What right. I tell people, you know how like a lot of adolescents, especially teenage boys, have a hard time talking about their feelings, right? There's this stereotype that boys don't talk about their feelings. Neither do and, they. Not so, these days. Yeah. <laughs> so what I do is I might tell a, a, a client of mine, look at that raccoon and tell me what you think that raccoon might be feeling based on its body language and what sounds it's making. Right. And most people will say, oh, he looks angry because he's growling or his, his hair is puffed up. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I say... Oh, well, what sounds and words do you use to let people know in your family that you're upset or that you're angry? Mm -hmm. And how do people know how you feel? Mm -hmm. And so we use the animals, reading the animals' body language as a direct parallel to how we communicate with people in, in our ecosystem or in our family. Um, and that works really well because people tend to resonate with animals. Right. Absolutely. Wow. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you so much for being here um, again. Yeah. 
so just for people that are listening or watching um, or both, mm -hmm. uh, because this will be also on Spotify and other platforms. Uh, Daniel has his website there on the screen, but also it's going to be in the description. So y'all can check out his awesome website. It's got, um, you know, meet our animals, ecotherapy, uh, services rent you know services uh coming attractions public speaking do you do public speaking i do do public speaker i sure do yep nice cool. <clears throat> awesome Thanks. well um yeah any other last thoughts or words um yeah i'm i'm working on a uh, a book actually it should be out in the by the end of this year i'm hoping um that's about a memoir of trauma and it's called when the bed bugs bite so be on the lookout for that that will be on my website um okay. But I encourage anybody who's experienced any kind of traumatic event or crime to please, please, please get help. Contact a local therapist. Yeah. Um, there's no shame whatsoever in in having difficulty functioning afterwards. Because I know I certainly did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's also um, a national hotline for mm -hmm. uh, suicide aware a uh, suicide hotline yes. that you can um, like if anybody's experienced some kind of like a suicidal. Mm -hmm thoughts or, or whatnot, yes. um, you can, um, you don't have to call, you can actually just text and it's obviously anonymous. Mm -hmm. uh, you, they, they don't record your no, your phone number and also you can use whatever name you want. And then you just kind of okay. just text and chat with like, I'm feeling this yeah. way, I don't know. And then there's um, domestic violence shelters in uh, a, lot, a lot of the big cities, but also probably in some small towns around the country as well. Sure, uh, sure. And then um, as far as trauma, what, I guess I'll ask you this last question. Like, sure. what if, if someone has suffered some sort of trauma, whatever that might be, whether it's a, an intruder or maybe even if, because that's, that's psychological trauma and it's also emotional trauma and mental trauma. Yes. Right? What about like, so what do you, what sort of, uh, techniques or type mm -hmm. of therapy would you consider for someone that would have gone through like some kind of emotional, sure. you know, there's a few different things. I mean, anxiety is the most um, sort of long-term likely side effect from trauma that people experience. Okay. But um, in when it first happens or shortly after it happens, people will experience acute anxiety that often results in panic. And when panic happens and, and you stay in that panicky place and you can't function, there is a, um, a therapy called EMDR therapy, okay. which is really helpful for traumatic events. It has a like over 90% success rate in uh, treating trauma, highly effective. Um, and then there's also anxiety um, traumas like uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, sort of gets you out of your head and back into the, the space where you are so you're not in the what if zone. Because anxiety is all about thinking, oh God, what if, what if, what if, what if this would have happened? What if that would have happened? Um, so PTSD, anxiety are the two biggest side effects or, or um, consequences. But EMDR therapy and CBT therapy are two of the most helpful things that, that I know of. Perfect. That yeah. is awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and I could talk to you forever, but, you know, <laughs> time is precious. So yes, it is. Thank you so much for being here and um let's stay in contact yeah thanks for having me take care thank you so much uh -huh.